Hi everybody, welcome back to Mando Lessons. My name is Baron Collins Hill. And this week, we're in episode three of the Intermediate Mandolin series. Episode one was learning an excellent tune that you're gonna need to know in order to progress through these lessons. The tune is Gallipede. In episode two, we worked on the chords, not only learning what the chords were, but then also working on playing the melody and saying what chord was going over the melody at any given time. This, episode three, we're gonna be putting it all together. So we're gonna be playing chords and melody at the same time. It sounds like this. So that's what we're gonna be working on. Before we jump right in, I'm gonna put in a quick plug. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel. Drop a like if you're so inclined. Also, all my lessons are always free. You can find them all here on YouTube or at mandolessons.com. There are a couple ways to donate, which helps me do what I do and put out new lessons every week and do my live streams. Uh, there's links in the description. I've got a PayPal page. I've got a Patreon membership page where you can get access to lessons early, patron-only live streams, stuff like that. I've also got merch. I've got the mandolin headstock t-shirt. I've got mugs, all sorts of stuff. Again, links to all this are in the description. Not required, but greatly appreciated. Without further ado, let's jump into today's lesson. All right, so we're working on Gallipede again in the key of G. We've got the melody under our fingers. We know when the chords change in our heads, and it's time to throw down some chord shapes while we're playing the melody. Now it's a fairly simple technique. I've done lessons on this before, but as a quick recap, essentially we're gonna be using strings that are lower in pitch from our melody. So for example, that first little phrase, our three chords, we have, it's a G chord, then a D chord, then a G. And the G first G chord's on the third string, sorry, the second string, the A string. The D chord comes on that open A string, and the last chord in the phrase comes on the fifth fret of the third string, that D string. So we're gonna need to build chords in lower pitch than our melody. If we put notes um, in our chord that are higher than the melody, our brain kind of thinks those higher notes are the melody, so it would end up, rather than sounding like this, we would get something like this. Kind of loses the melody a little bit. So, got to keep our double stops and our chord shapes underneath the um, the melody string. So let's jump right in. I'll go through it chord by chord. You'll pick up pretty quick what's going on. You'll start to recognize chord shapes you already know. All the good stuff. So, as I said, that first phrase, and we've got the chords, G, D, G. So, let's get that G down. We've got a B, and we need lower pitch strings, so we've got the open G string and the open D string. It's kind of like playing three out of the four strings, or it's exactly like, honestly, of your classic G chord that you already know. You're just leaving off that E string, third fret. So there's our melody note, is right on top, the highest note in the little bundle right there. So we have three out of the four notes of that G chord, and then we can do the same thing with the D chord when our melody note is the open A. It's, it's like that D chord you know, but you're just not playing the E string. Then for that final uh, end of the phrase where our melody is the, third, the fifth fret on the D string, that G, we're just gonna hit an open G below it, so just kind of an octave pair. So let's do that phrase again. 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 Nice, moving on, our melody. And our chords are gonna be C, D. So we need a C chord, 
right there when our melody's on the third fret of the A string. It's set up beautifully just for that uh, lowest three strings of our C chord. There's our full C chord. We're again leaving out the E string. Starting to see a pattern here. And then we have our D chord there. We've already done this once before. Open A string, need a D chord. Two, open, open. So we have. So putting all of those phrases together sounds like this. to learn and as you can see here sometimes you need to take out a note or two just to make the chord really uh, heard so in that first phrase I might have taught but if we try to throw a C chord over that it gets a little messy so I just simplified it a little bit to gives you a little space for that chord to ring and then second half of the A part that's the same and then our melody of the ending phrase or sorry uh, I think I taught let's do that And the chords are, it's a C and then a D and then a G. So, C, need a C, we've already done this, third fret on the A string is a C. Build that three quarters of a classic C chord underneath. Now we need a D with this fourth fret on the D string. We haven't come across this before. Our melody is that F sharp. Um, and we need, we only have one string to work with. We only have the G string that's lower in pitch than the D string, which our melody note is on. So I like to do this little partial D chord. You might know, kind of based on this, uh, the bar chord shape of like A and D, you can just play the two string version of that. So second fret on the G string and fourth fret on the D string. And that's a nice little D double stop or D partial chord. And then we end the melody on that G on the D string, and we have again the octave of the G down below. So there's the whole A part. Let's play through that once and then move on to the B part. D, G, C chord, D, G, D, G, C, D, G, again. melody a couple pickup notes the downbeat of the second part is the second fret on the a string g c g d that's how the chords lay over so now let's find those chords we've already done most of them you need a g with that second fret you've probably found out that pattern by now open open two now we went up to three, two, open on the E string, and we need a C with that open E string. Think about your classic chords first. 
There's that C chord, and now we are using the open E. With no E, C chord with the open E. G, C. So now we need a G chord. This is another new one. We need a G chord with our melody note on the fifth fret of the A string. I like to just do open D, G and open D. And then our melody finishes up on the open A string and we need a D chord. Again, we've done that a million times to open open. So let's do that whole phrase together. The second phrase is very similar, except now we just walk down the scale. Next phrase in the B part is the same as the first. And then we have the ending phrase of the B part. And our chords are, are G, B, G. So we need a G, open, open, two. D on the open A is two open open. And G on the fifth fret of the D string means we've got that open octave below. So let's play the whole B part together now. One, two, three. Moving on to the C part, the melody. So most of that is just a G chord. So the, all of this is G. It's a G, 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 and then C and then. So we just need a lot of G underneath that whole first big phrase of the C part. And again, we've already done this. We have the G, sorry, the D on the A string as our melody note. I love just using those open G and D strings as drones. And then our melody goes to the third fret. I like to just leave that fifth fret down on the A string. And then we can play a full four string chord. It's kind of like a power chord in uh, in mandolin G chord form. It's a really kind of nice, smooth, um, but powerful G sound. And then we have our C chord. So let's do that first, just all those Gs again. And then we have C, and our hand is already in this shape, um, so you could do the classic C chord to D like we've already done, but let's uh, switch it up a little bit and just add another voicing in there. I'm just going to take that 5 and 3 that we have on the D and A string, sorry, on the A and E strings, and move it to the D and A. You can play it as a four string chord again. It's just a, a little bit, um, it's a slightly different sound. I have a lesson called my favorite C chord. Uh, and this is definitely one of them. It's the one I was talking about in that lesson. It's 
just a nice sounding chord. So let's use that instead of our classic chord. And the second half. And we have our final uh, chord to learn here. So we have is the uh, melody line and we have C and then a D and then a G. So let's use that altered C chord shape. And then we have a D and we have the fifth, a D with the melody being the fifth fret in the A string, our D note. I'm gonna throw that whole D chord underneath, that whole kind of bar D shape. So it's two, four, five. Five. And then ending on that fifth fret of the G string, of the D string, is a G with the open G below. Ending phrase. It's a little bit more of a handful, but since we got so used to those other voices using them over and over again, the same chord shapes, figured I'd throw in something a little spicy at the end there. So that's the whole tune. Let's, uh, let's play through it, um, get those chords uh, under your fingers. Now there are tablature, there is tablature and standard notation uh, over at my website that you can find where I have these chords written out um, if that's something you wanna really look at. But I think you've got the idea at this point just by doing it by ear. And the great thing is, this works for most tunes in the key of G. You know, you're gonna be using G, C, and D chords a lot. Um, you're gonna run into the same situations of, okay, I need a G chord and my melody note is on the second fret of the A string. What, what do I have to use? Um, you've got that classic G. Um, you'll just hit those same opportunities over and over and it'll just start to become part of your muscle memory. So, without further ado, let's, uh, let's play through this tune. One, two, here. That's episode three in the intermediate series, really tying the melody and the chords together. Try this on a bunch of tunes in the key of G. I love this example using Gallopede because the chords change so quickly. So if you can get it down on Gallopede, you can definitely start throwing some chords in on tunes where the, uh, the chord structure doesn't move quite as quickly as it does on this tune. The more you do this, the more it will kind of work its way into your muscle memory uh, and it'll just become second nature and it'll just create a more powerful, exciting mandolin style. Subscribe if you haven't already because there's more lessons in the intermediate series coming out soon. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.